everybody, and welcome to our special series, Fields of Hope with CGTN. I'm coming to you live right now from Huangling Village in Wuyuan County of Jiangxi Province, where we've been exploring the rural areas and how the area has been revitalized in recent times. As you can see behind me, Huangling Village is a gorgeous village built into the mountainside of this rural area. We're going to learn more today about how it's been revitalized and look at the local lives of the people here and how it's been urban through the ecotourism, combining agriculture and tourism together to attract more people to come in recent times. One of the most prominent things about Huangling is how it utilizes its agriculture year round. As you can see behind me, there are these ladies who are laying out these produce. We've got some chilies here. They also have some pumpkin skin and some other dried produce. So what is, they do here is they will dry these produce year round and especially during autumn time. This is a way to preserve these vegetables, this produce year round and so it can have a longer shelf life. We can have a look at these, these chilies over here. Ai ni ha, ni ha, ni mei tian gan jie ge la jiao ma. Ah, okay. So I was asking her if they do this every day. It's usually an autumn time thing when the produce is very, very rich. Um, but they also might do this year round for various vegetables that are grown here. This is one of the most uh, iconic sites that you will actually see here in Huangling is all over the rooftops. They will lay out these kinds of chilies, these baskets full of these dried goods to showcase over the countryside. It really creates a picturesque scene and many photographers actually love to come here to take photos of these baskets of dried goods with the scenic mountain behind it. I'm going to show you some more incredible views of Huangling as we walk throughout the city. So let's continue on our path around Huangling village. This was the P, the, the Nangua pi, which is the pumpkin skin. And then this was also another kind of dried vegetable grown in the wild mountainside. This is what it looks like when it's been dried. So it's like dried for like three months. Wow. It's incredible how they've figured out these ways to dry the goods, to preserve them for longer, and also create such a cool effect around the scenic area. Once again, if you're joining us live right now, I'm live from CGTN. Thank you for watching our live stream today. I'm going to be exploring Huangling Village and showing you how it's been revitalized in recent years. It's a really beautiful village area up in the mountaintops and we're going to be seeing some more of the really cool mountainside area built here. Let's take a stroll. I've got my beautiful Han Fu on and I've also also meet some local craftsmen along the way and see how they have built their lives and bettered their economic situation here in Huangling Village. We're going to continue down this path. It's actually quite a narrow path, so we're going to go very clear carefully and slowly. It was also raining here recently, so it might be a little bit slippery, but it's created a really beautiful scenic fog effect around the village area. So an interesting thing about Huangling is that previously this village faced some difficult times. It's a really remote location in the mountains. It makes it hard to get to and it was um, kind of having difficult time with, with its economic prosperity. But the local government and through many other rural revitalization initiatives, many people have helped make Huangling become more prosperous. Uh, they started rebuilding the city, started making sure that they preserved the Ming Hanhui style buildings. As you can see in front of me, there are many, many beautiful Anhui style buildings, which is this white architecture with the tiling on top. We're going to see more of these Hui style buildings as we explore around this area. Thank you for joining us live today, you guys. Let me know in the comments, have you ever heard of Huangling Village before? And are you excited to explore this village with me today? We're gonna continue going down just a little bit more. 
and explore some of the many little alleyways. So this village is actually quite large and sprawls around this whole mountaintop area. As you can see, the steps behind me go up and around into the mountain. There are many of these little paths and alleys here that spread all around the village. So it gives you plenty of time to explore up, to explore down. You can have a really nice time exploring around here for a day. And like I previously mentioned, this village experienced some difficult times, but recently it has been really remodeled, revitalized, and become a more popular tourist attraction nowadays because of it. There are many hotels, many shops, many cafes that were built here, and it has attracted many, many more people to come and work here. There's also many local people who are from this village that were employed to work in this kind of village, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. We're going to meet a few of them to see how they've become part of the local businesses here. As you can see, we're walking down this beautiful alley, lots of local architecture with the Hui style building, vibrant green. It's just a really lush tourist environment. Many people love to come here for weekend getaways or during the week. It's really popular year round now, actually, not just like in autumn when they're drying the produce. Previously, it was just then because autumn time is when they were growing the produce. But actually, year round, Huangling has a really rich agricultural livelihood. And in the spring, like last month, you could see the beautiful yellow flowers that were blooming around the area. And as each season comes and goes, there are many, many different kinds of produce that you can see. So actually, no matter what time or what season you go in, you can see many, many different, um, different kinds of produce here growing. Let's say hello to some of you guys. We're really excited that you're joining our live stream. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're really happy that you're watching our Fields of Hope series in Jiangxi province. Like I mentioned before, I'm here in Huangling village where there's been so many revitalization initiatives to help improve the local lives of the people here and to also attract more tourists and visitors to come and have a wonderful rural getaway experience. We're in this really narrow alleyway now and we're going to be about to come out to the main street area We've had a little pocket by ourselves, but this town is actually quite busy right now. And we've been lucky to avoid some of the big tour groups, but we're actually going to go see some of them right now. Also, if you've noticed my dress today, I'm wearing a Han Fu. So many people love to come and experience traditional life by also wearing a traditional Han Fu clothing. You can get the clothes, the skirt, you can get your hair done if you want to see my hair was also done. <laughs> and you can also add accessories to your look with hair pieces and with umbrellas, fans, all kinds of things. It's really popular for people to come and to experience the local life in a really rich way with your Han Fu and other beautiful dresses. Okay, you guys, we're about to be entering the main street area where lots of the people are. We're going to be looking at how many of the local people have started their livelihood here. Hello! <laughs> Everybody's very friendly here as well. We're going to make some new friends. Peter said it looks very peaceful. Yes, it's very peaceful, especially on those smaller alleys. But like I mentioned, we're going to be entering this more busy alleyway soon. Alfred says, hi. Hi, Alfred. Thank you for watching today. Bobby says, hello from the States. Hi, Bobby. I'm also from the United States. I'm from Texas. What state do you come from? I have been living in China for nearly eight years. And Huangling Village is definitely one of the most remote and exciting places to visit on your trip to Wuyuan County in Jiangxi. As you can see around me, there's all kinds of local crafts going on. Over here, we have a craftsman who is blowing glass. Wow, or he's shaping the glass with the fire. Wow, that's really cool. So you can see he's a craftsman who's been making these. Hi, ni hao. Ni hao. Hi, wow, it's so cool. 
Ne? Wow, you are so excited to learn this. You are so excited to learn this. Wow, a long time, more than, more than 10 years actually, that she's been making this craft. I think many of the local people here have been working on these skills and crafts for a long time. And many visitors can come and enjoy and take part to learn more about these crafts and also take home some fun gifts for their friends. Now we're gonna move on over here. We have a really special flip pancake that I wanna show you guys. I'm gonna be able to make them from my friend over here. He is a... Uh, Kind of a local celebrity, actually. He's been on many TV shows, featured many places. Hi, Niha, Niha. Wow, this is what? This is Ma Bing. Ma Bing. Okay, so this is the flip pancake. Let's see the Wow. So he's coating these? Whoa! Whoa! Did you see that? <gasps> oh my gosh! So he coats the little pancakes. These are jigsaw oh, jima. Yeah, this is jima. Ah, it's like um sesame seeds. Oh, so he's like coating it with jigsaw jima. <笑>再来凤凰山点头 <laughs> I'm really scared to flip it. Well, well I'm pa. Miss it, Sizi is on. Miss it. Yes, I'm going to yell out Tongi like. Okay, can't can me. I am really scared. I don't want them to fall and flip. Wow. Wow. Wow! Okay, <laughs> okay, I think I to more <laughs> He makes it look so easy. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Yeah, so when I when I watch him it looks so easy. But actually when I try it, it's really really difficult. Whoa. Wow,你你没听很呃，我多少？我从十七岁就开始做这个行业，已经做了十几年了。十几年，哇，我，they make so many of these every day. As you can see over here, he's actually got many more lined up. 上次没有芝麻，然后我们将工序就把这个芝麻给均匀的粘上去了。哦，本来就是那个光面，然后经过然后烘烤。Wow, so after it's Covered in these seeds, we come over here to the oven. <gasps> oh, it's cooking them now. Can you guys hear the sizzling? Oh, he just said maybe like two or three minutes. And then when it's finished, we can look over here. We have some finished products that are being sold right now. And we've got some hungry customers in line already. There's a, quite a line over here. I think everybody's really excited to try these snacks. <gasps> oh, what can you This is Jima. Okay, let's show these. Okay. Wow. 
Ooh, you can see the steam. This is what? 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 Oh, okay. Very good. Yes, it's very good. Let's open it. Then it's very soft and soft. The skin is soft. The skin is soft. Oh, it's very good. Yes, it's very good. 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 The sesame has such a nice balanced flavor. It's a little bit crunchy on the outside, but really soft and gooey on the inside. You can see like it pulls apart so easily. <laughs> 哇，很好吃，很好吃！谢谢哇，<笑>你没替你吃这个吗？<笑>我饿的时候也会吃一点，因为偷吃一个。<笑> I said, do you eat them every day? He said, oh, if I'm hungry, maybe I'll eat them. <笑>谢谢，谢谢你，谢谢你，很好，很好，谢谢啊。拿给导师，拿摄影师拿。哦哦哦，呜、哦哦哦、，He's so generous and so kind. 哇，很好吃，谢谢你，谢谢你。Wow, so you can see. This guy has、um, shared with us his local crafts, and we're gonna see a few more craftsmen. Let me not forget my umbrella. Oh, we're gonna go explore and see a few more other local craftsmen. This was one of the many vendors here in Huangling. Huangling has a very lively, vibrant market street area. So many people are coming here now to build the economy, to to help their own local incomes, and it has created such a great attraction for people to come and experience. As you can see, there's lots of people around me now. It's bustling. It's very lively. This is just one of the main street areas that you can explore. It's actually so so big, though. You can explore down by the terraces, down in the countryside area, or you can even explore up. If you can see there, up there's even more buildings, more Hui style architecture that you can look at. We're going to be seeing more of that along the way. Once again, thank you guys for joining CGTN's live stream. I'm here in Huangling Village of Wuyuan County, Jiangxi Province, where we've been doing our Fields of Hope series, talking about the rural revitalization of this area and this province. I hope you've enjoyed our series so far. We've loved meeting all the different people and places of Jiangxi Province to explore how they've been helping through these rural revitalization initiatives, helping increase the local economy and the livelihood of the people here. We have another craftsman over here. Wow! Oh, we have a bamboo maker. He's 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 weaving a basket. Wow! Yang Kui, he's so fast. You you 没天做这个吗？没天做这个吗？每天做这个。Wow! I said, I said every day. Do you make this? He said, Yes. Wow! I think it's hard. You when did you start learning to make this? Twenty years ago. 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 Wow! As you can see, like I guess he finishes, and it would make something like this. This is this one, right? Okay, can can. Oh, so so what he's doing is he's weaving this part that will become like this kind of. Wow! So cool. <laughs> it it looks like it's just. So perfect! I can't believe this is something that's made by hand here in Huangling Village by this local craftsman. Wow! I don't think I can try this. It will be too difficult. <laughs> wow! I wonder if this needs more jagama. So just this kind of basket. So I guess you can use this for sifting, for cooking, all kinds of things. Wow! Hello, hello. We've got some friendly faces here. You speak English, ma? Just so. Just so. It's very good. Are, are you happy here? Yeah. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, it's a nice day here in Huangling. There's so many people who have gathered to enjoy the lively atmosphere. Xie 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 fu. Okay, na jie ge. Wow. 
We have more to see here, you guys. Let's continue on our way. We're going to be going uh, back this way to see more about the craftsmen and the local life here. We have so many people gathered around us now, and we're going to head back this way to go to the next craftsman. So let's go and see what else we can find here. Wow. I'm so amazed by everything around us. So many beautiful places. When we saw the chilies earlier, the ones that were being dried, um, they're, they're more than just used for the drying of it. We're going to see some people who are making them and who are crushing them. Let me know also in the comments what you've enjoyed seeing so far and what you would like to see me try next. Many of you actually said that you are watching from all around. Somebody said he's watching from Nigeria. Thank you so much for watching our live stream today. We are taking you live to experience this rural village here in Jiangxi province. So thank you for joining us today. Hi, you guys. Uh, Fatima said, can you please share the recipe? Because I was eating one of these snacks. And uh, I think it might be a secret recipe, but I can ask and see if he can share it with us later to share with all of you guys. I'm really happy that it made you excited and maybe it made you a little bit hungry. Maybe you'll have a chance to try it someday. Let me say hello to some of you guys as well. Wow. Hello, hello. Thank you guys for joining us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Like I mentioned before, there's more than just craftsmen and shops here and markets. There's actually so many coffee shops as well. There's a really vibrant coffee culture around Jiangxi province that really surprised me. We're gonna pass a few coffee shops now. This is the shop we passed earlier. <laughs> That's the shop owner. And there's a coffee shop over here you can see. <laughs> so this is a quite a famous coffee cup brand. It's really common to see the coffee cups have the name of the village on them here. Just like if you watched my live stream in Jingdezhen, you saw that the art market said Jingdezhen on the coffee cups here in Huangling. It also features the Huangling coffee cup village here. Hello. <laughs> Let's continue on our way. There's going to be a beautiful archway over here. Lots of flowers. It's very lively. It's very, very beautiful. Wow. You can see everybody just stops and takes photos everywhere. It's such a great scenic picture at spot. It really attracts lots of photographers to come here. In its early days, actually, that's what put it on the map, is once they found out about the people drying the chilies on the rooftops, many people started coming here because like, they saw, wow, it's so beautiful. It's very attractive. I want to come take some photos, look at the scenic background and the mountainside, and I want to take part in that. So it's very vibrant here. We have another shop here that is selling some kind of crafts, some sachets, some window decorations, some fans. We have all kinds of things here. It really is just like a feast for your eyes. They really made it a cultural immersive experience here in Huangling. I can definitely see why so many people want to come here to explore and enjoy the area. There's a lot of crowd behind me now. Actually, Huangling in one day previously had 30,000 people here in just one day. Can you believe it? That's how popular it's become in recent years. And so you can see the success of these rural revitalization initiatives. It's really working to help improve the people's lives and also put Huangling on a map. Let's take a moment and look at this view, you guys. Isn't it incredible? It's just beautiful here. It's so beautiful. We'll wait for this group to pass as I admire the views over here. It stopped raining as well, so I haven't had to use my umbrella. Let's meet our next master over here. Wow.
is incredible! He's amazing! Wow! <laughs> I think he's gonna keep playing more songs! He jumped on! Wow! Humpy Alia! <laughs> wow! He jumped on! Jumped on! Wow! He's amazing! We are going to see our next craftsman. We watched this amazing flute player who's been playing for a long time. But now I want to show you where my umbrella came from. So you can see over here, he's making these umbrellas. The one I had earlier before. It's a famous local craft here in Huangling village. And it all starts with this kind of shaping of the wood. So he's shaping these, ooh, and it's going to become the ribbing, the inside of the umbrella first. So this is the first step. Hi, Niha, Niha. Wow. This is how you are. Wow, it's beautiful. Han Pian Liang. Do you have Nanda Ma? You can, you can. You can do it for one day. One day you can do it for one day. Okay, so like I asked him like if in one day if he can fix and make one of these ribbings for the umbrella. As you can see, he's got many behind and he also has many over here. So he must be making these. Do you have to do it for one day? Okay, every day he's making these. So let's take a look at the next step of the process. So this is one step to make the ribbing of the umbrella. Let's take a look and actually see what it looks like for the finished product. Wow, actually if you look over here, we can see what it looks like when it's coming together a little bit more. Here's the ribbing around outside of the umbrella. This is the part he was just making here. And then finally, the cloth is put on top of it to create the uh, outside final effect. Let's take a look inside the shop. Wow. It's so beautiful. It's like umbrella paradise here. What do you guys think of the umbrellas? Which one is your favorite? Do you guys have a favorite color? One of my favorite colors is pink. That's why I had a pink one earlier. But we can also see what other colors there are. And we also can see a craftswoman who is decorating. Wow, ni hua hua. Hi, ni hao. So she's painting on the umbrella. It's hand painted. I didn't realize that. That's really what makes it such a beautiful local handicraft and really unique as well. Wow. Wow, so every day she's making and painting these umbrellas and we've got this beautiful umbrella paradise behind us. It's actually perfect because in the rainy season, these are also waterproof. As I, as I came here before this morning to get my own umbrella, I asked her if it's okay to walk in the rain. very own beautiful and fun
So this is when the uh, culture of drying this, drying the chilies on the rooftop. That's what that is called. So that's the feature that we opened with earlier in our live stream. When you see the drying chilies in the baskets outside, that's what the feature is for. Wow, we've met so many amazing craftsmen. These are local villages who have started these businesses, continuing the cultural traditions of Wuyuan, and also being able to share this with visitors, visitors and tourists who come here. I have another master of his craft that I'm going to meet now. Let's go say hello to him over here. Hi, ni hao, ni hao. Wow, this is what? This is what? Wow, so we have a Maobi. This is a calligraphy pen and we have a master calligrapher. What can you can can ni uh hua? Hada hada. Let's watch the master. Calligraphy is such an interesting and fascinating craft. And it takes a long time to learn how to not only write in Chinese, but also to use the pen. Oh, can you see this? Let's see this one. So this is the character for Hua, which means flower. And it's perfect because it's springtime now and flowers are blooming everywhere. Wow! You're very good. I can try it. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh no, I've... I'm nervous. Say navy and K. Hey,你写这一点，再这一点，再接个吗？再写一个很啊。Oh no! I said, mine's very ugly. Okay, can can you say lie? I I am not very good at my calligraphy. I need to watch the master one more time. Wow. Okay, I'll try one more time. I didn't. I don't know how he does it. Thank you, teacher. Wow, you're very brave. Wow. I need to practice my calligraphy a little bit more, and maybe one day I'll be able to master just like his. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. I have a special guest who's joining me now. I know three characters that I can do really fast. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. You guys, this is Jason. Hi, everyone. So Jason, Happy birthday. Thank you. It is my birthday today, you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. So can you actually do something? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm okay. going to do three characters. <laughs> okay. So our special guest, Jason, is going to show me up with his calligraphy yeah, watch skills. This, watch this. Character number one. One. Oh. Character number two. Two. Character number three. <laughs> three. Thank you. <laughs> Jason, can, can you tell us what those mean? E, R, Sun, one, two, three. <laughs> Jason just showed me up with his calligraphy skills. Know. Counting <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> you found the hack. Are those the yes. three characters that you know? No, I know about 100 characters. Yeah. Wow, okay. I mean, that I can write. I can recognize about maybe 1,000. Wow. Which is not a lot. So it's not enough to be able to read like okay. a magazine even. That's okay. But it is enough to be able to basically read. You're on your way to becoming a Chinese calligraphy professional, though. I don't think so. <laughs> I think you need to get to the three to 5,000 range, and okay. I'm not even a third of the way there, so, <laughs> yeah. Slowly, day by day, day by day. Day by day. So what has your experience in Huangling been like? Well, I think this is... I was not expecting it to be as beautiful as it turned out. In fact, I'm trying, racking my brain since I got here with you yesterday to figure out, is there a more beautiful place anywhere else in the world? And I'm not sure I can think of any that stand out. Can you? No, not at all. Like every single place here is picturesque. We were just talking about this yesterday. When you, no matter where you're pointing your camera at, there's something beautiful yeah, to exactly. see. Yeah. What has your feelings been, I guess, walking around and seeing how the village has been revitalized? Well, you know, what I really appreciate about the revitalization of this village, I heard that 20 years ago, this was a sleepy town and now it's vibrant with thousands of people. Now we're fortunate enough to stay in the village itself, but come 
coming out in the morning, I had to wait five minutes for all of the tourist groups to pass by. <laughs> yeah. And what's also really cool is all of the cafes, restaurants, everything, all of the shops. Hello. Hello. Hi. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, to meet you too. You. From Tianjin. Tianjin. Oh, oh. oh, we come from Beijing. Oh, we're very so good. close. Yeah, this year. You just from Tianjin. Wow. Yeah? See, people come from Tianjin, which is actually more than a thousand miles away. Okay. Do you like it here? Yes, I like. It's very good. Yeah, <laughs> it's so beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it's beautiful. Have yeah. fun. Bye. Mm. Is that all of these shops and restaurants? are embedded in the original architecture, which is cascading down the mountains like a waterfall, and there's a waterfall. And there's a waterfall. <laughs> there's a waterfall. Yeah, it's interesting how they've really built everything into the mountainside. And some of this is original, like Ming Dynasty, Hui-style architecture that they've been able to remodel, kind of spiffy up a little bit, because, you know, you like you mentioned. wood parts, but yeah. the bricks may be centuries old. Intact still, yeah. yeah. And it's cool how they keep the old, and they've also yeah. combined it with the modern. They've integrated them together, so you have, like, coffee shops mm. and all kinds of modern things mixed with, like, the old cultural heritage crafts and the original architecture. It's, it's amazing. Well, you know what? Actually, I would like to mention something that's very difficult to capture on film. Is when we arrived here, firstly, it smelled like forests, like the Sierra Nevadas or something like that. But it also smells like flowers. And yeah. you can't capture that in film. You would actually have to come here. It's like being inside. You, you know, when you move your, your face away from the flower, you're like, oh, I can't smell it anymore. I feel a little sad. I wish I could just smell the flower all day. Yeah. If you're here, it just smells like that all the time. Yeah, all the time. It, it is very, very fresh. And almost like before in one of our other live streams, we were talking about the oxygen bar feeling. Mm -hmm. It feels like that here as well. You're so close to the mountains so many fresh vegetables plants like trees vegetation it's just so green and you're like oh, i feel like you can really breathe everything in here mm. yeah i've also seen pictures of this village a lot and in the media before so when we arrived here i was like wow this is a really great opportunity because all of these white buildings with the black tiles embedded in a rainforest-like environment. And it's been raining, and that's actually been really beautiful. I went to this place called Water Street, which is a cascading waterfall covered with bridges and, you know, original brick on both sides. And it was raining, and, I, and it was foggy, and it added to the mystique and to the romanticism of this place. Yeah, you know, I think in Chinese they even have a phrase about that, something about the fog and the mountains and the mist, and Chinese people love... <laughs> <laughs> The expert doesn't know. No, this, the expert is right here. I, I should memorize the phrase, though, because I've been to so many, like, mountainous regions, and everybody's like, whoa, the fog. It creates such a cool, beautiful effect in China, and they just love it. You know, there is another Chinese phrase in, in terms of revitalization. If you want to have wealth, first build a road, which a lot of us are familiar with who have lived in China for a while. It's a very common phrase, and essentially that's what they've done with this rural revitalization around this village. In addition to the wealth that we see here in this village, all of the surrounding villages that we were on our way through to get here are full of tourists who are encamped down in other villages and take the cable car up to here. So the revitalization didn't just help this village, Huangling village, it helped the entire county and all of the surrounding villages as well. Yeah, that's right. I think if you've been watching and connecting with our Fields, our Fields of Hope series, you've been seeing different parts of Wuyuan County, which is where Huangling is, and seeing how the development has totally changed this county, especially in the past 10 years because of these developments. It's, it's amazing. It's really extraordinary how they've been able to do that. And like I mentioned before in the live stream, up to 30,000 people came here in one day. Can you imagine? That, I, you know, I was thinking it was thousands. Now that you say 30,000? 30, 30,000! Every day? Wow. Just like for one high day. 30,000. And you were here a month ago, weren't I you? I was here a month Can ago. Can you tell us why you were here a month ago? <laughs> so there are these beautiful yellow canola flowers that bloom in the spring in Wuyuan County. And it just happens for a very short window of time at the end of March to the beginning of April. So I was like, this is on my bucket list. I need to come to Wuyuan County and I need to go see these flowers. So I did come here a month ago. Mm. I came to Huangling and I also went to another village called Jiangling, which is where the flowers are just so beautiful. So many terraces of yellow flowers. It's gorgeous. It's a must see. So if you come to Kuangling, year round is perfect, but also for the yellow flowers come at the end of March. Yeah, I was thinking because I'm here as a travel group, kind of, I have to bring my wife back here. And so I'm probably going to come next year in March for when it's flowers. But you know, what's really interesting is there are flowers everywhere here yes. on every terrace of all kinds of different varieties. And it is absolutely mesmerizing how well kept this entire complex is this village yeah. where people actually live 
and work. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It's very well upkept. Uh, the first thing I noticed about Huangling when I even came a month ago was just the amenities. The facilities are amazing. Yeah. There's great roads that are paved. You can still have the, the natural ancient feeling, but it's just so well designed as well mm. for the experience. It just makes you feel like, wow, I can really see things. Even if there are 30,000 people here, there's good bathrooms, there's good mm. amenities. The hotels are really oh, yeah. nice. You can have a really cool immersive cultural and tourist experience here in the middle of a rural village it's incredible one of the things i noticed was that they've put in or installed a lot of things i imagine this the facility the weird room is yeah. not something that existed 500 years ago let's talk about the weird room. yeah there, so there is a weird, what is the yeah, weird room yeah, you go ahead. No. <laughs> so they have a weird room here mm -hmm. and it is a aptly named weird room uh, because it's one of those places where you walk in and the whole floor is slanted it is built at an angle purposefully that makes you feel totally off kilter but that's just one room of it yeah. there's another room that has everything built on the sideways. roof and oh, the yeah, sideways the roof. there's yeah. all kinds yeah. of rooms right well. did you try that I tr I took pictures in all of them and made videos because it was silly you can sit down sideways and then stand up and it looks like gravity's not working which was a lot of fun but I also the the slanted room I have to say it made me feel a little dizzy. It was it was really great for pictures, but standing in the room sideways, you, you're actually confused about where gravity is, and it's perplexing a little bit, and your body has to adjust. Yeah, this was mine. So I went to the upside down room. I'll show you guys. This was the upside down room. So you can see everything is upside down in it. I'm pointing up, and it looks like I'm standing on the ceiling. <laughs> That's a, that's a cool one, you know, to share on Facebook and whatever. Like yeah. put on your social media, WeChat, because, you know, I don't, actually I've seen a lot of people go to those kinds of places, but I haven't actually been to one yeah. until I came here to Huangling. Yeah. So there there are temple complexes, there are agricultural th uh, engagements that you can go on, tourism, how they, they dry chilies. There's so much you can do here. And the thousands of the 30,000 yeah. people that come here daily. Yes. Um, it's really nice as well because you can come here like I had came with my boyfriend before. You can have a romantic getaway. You can come with your family. There's all kinds of like there's even a uh, nature attraction part where kids can go climbing in a jungle over there. So there's all kinds of really cool things that you can come whether you're a culture lover, you're coming with your family, you're coming to experience whatever aspect. There's a wide variety of activities and interesting things that you can do or if you just want to come take photos that's really what most people come here to do is take photos of all the scenic areas here I would also say that if you have the opportunity stay in the village itself because then you don't have to do any traveling you can just because it's not a hotel it's in the various rooms throughout the entire village complex so you open your door and you're part of the village right when you wake up in the morning right yeah. when you go to bed at night which is really nice yes i highly recommend that yeah and if you're going shopping you could just drop off stuff at your hotel room <laughs> and go immediately right back out hands free that's a smart <laughs> that's a smart benefit mm -hmm. anybody watching who's like a big shopper is taking notes they're like oh, oh okay this so is how i do that. it yeah. <laughs> we're going to be going up here there's actually a scenic view inside where we're going to have another overlook around the city so shall we walk up this way to go inside are we ready let's see if we want to go up now have you seen some cool scenic overlooks jason there's a terraced field outside Ooh. of this area just on the other side of the oh building. really and I think it's actually used up for one rice, more not, not right now oh okay it's actually really beautiful come on you guys we've got one more set of stairs and to then, go of course you have the surrounding mountain peaks which are on every side. Oh, it's just gorgeous really how it's just nestled into the mountainside here. Have you come to this viewpoint yet? I have not seen this. Thank Ooh, you for showing me something new. You're welcome. This is a yeah, a really nice viewpoint where you can see more of the Hui architecture. And in the pictures that I've seen in magazines and papers of this village, you always see this. Yes. These lattices that are stretched out from all of the buildings where agricultural goods, especially chilies and corn, are set out to dry. Yeah, we started the live stream, if you guys have been with us from the beginning, we started by seeing some of these in a different part. And during autumn time especially, you're going to see these baskets filled with chilies, corn, other dried produce all over the village. You can see there's some baskets over there as well. This is not the high time or high season for it, but there are still some around, even above us, chilies, <laughs> corn everywhere. Yeah, you know, a lot of the tourists here come here to play with this. There's a really high area 
on the top of the mountain here where there's a bunch of these set out and lots of tourists are there like throwing it up and taking <laughs> pictures of themselves, having a good time. And there must be like a hundred people there at any given time doing photos of themselves, their friends, their family. Yes, th you, this is the perfect place to get your Instagram shots, your WeChat moment yeah. shots, show off to your friends and family. We've had a lot of viewers today also saying hi. Bobby said pretty good calligraphy. He was probably <laughs> talking to you. I think he was talking about you. <laughs> probably not me because mine did not look very good. And your one, two, and three were very good. Uh, oh, he also said happy birthday to me. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, Janie said it's beautiful. And Adorinto said keep up the good work. Thank you guys very much. Do you have some any um, final thoughts about Huangling Village for our viewers today? Well, if you like cable cars, you can stay down the hill and take cable cars up. I had the opportunity to go earlier. I did not. But the ca I actually do love cable cars. I take them a Everybody lot in Beijing. Everybody in the comments say, Jason, why didn't you try the cable car? <laughs> you know, but if you're coming up on the cable cars, you can see the village from various distances, which gives you an opportunity to take different kinds of photos and motion photos of zooming in physically into the village. Ooh, okay. How, how many hours or days would you recommend people coming to Huangling? Okay, if you have to do a minimum, you need like two or three nights because you need to be able to go to sleep and wake up here. I think that's the joy of it. You wouldn't have to do any traveling to come here. You just open the door, you're here, you get to walk around in all of the various little alleys that are nestled between all of these ancient buildings. And you know, what's really cool, I think my favorite thing is, everyone is super happy the locals and the tourists and i have had so many people say can i take a picture with you can i take a picture with you which i i think is really fun oh it is really nice i think everybody's been so friendly to us here and it's just been a really nice cultural experience i don't know if you guys can also hear in the background there's the flute player playing yeah. who we met earlier it just provides the perfect idyllic village background for us here. We hope you've enjoyed seeing Huangling Village and learning more about the rural revitalization in this area with our Fields of Hope series. Thank you so much for joining us throughout Jiangxi Promise. Oh, <laughs> this is for me. Should I, should I open this now? Okay. Oh, it says, Dear Rachel, happy birthday. Oh, it's the whole team. Can I show? That's so sweet. Thank you. This is Bebe. She's been doing some live streams and she's with our Spanish team here. So thank you guys so much. It, thank you. Yeah. Represent all of members oh, of our team. Oh, thank Happy you. To you. <laughs> oh, I to appreciate show our it. friends the beautiful scenery. Thank you. <laughs> it's been amazing. It's, it is my 30th birthday today and it's so nice to experience Huangling Village, like waking up today, like it's my 30th and to see the village area was just incredible. So thank you guys. And it's been just such a joy to show you guys more about the rural area here in Jiangxi province and celebrate with everybody here. So thank you for joining us today. And we hope to catch you on more of our live streams and more of our Fields of Hope projects in the future. So we'll see you guys, bye-bye.